Do you want to retire in California? If you said yes, congratulations, you are stuck in the 1990s. That was the last decade California was considered a retirement hotspot. Oh, and if you are just waking up from that 1990s coma, Nirvana did break up, sort of, Seinfeld's finale flop, and George Michaels wasn't singing about girls. Such a good singer. Today we look at where people want to retire in California, and I will tell you up front, these places are expensive, and in most cases, they're ridiculously expensive. Like 90% of us can't afford these towns. We got to treat this video like an episode of Lifestyle in the Rich and Famous. We did a survey last year where we asked people where they would retire if they could in California. There were several other publications that had similar surveys and for the most part, they had the same cities. Two of them on my survey didn't show up in any other list. And I think that has to do with cost. Those two are the most affordable on this list. All right, we're gonna take a look at California's most desired retirement hotspots. Got it, get it, good. Let's take a look. Number 10, Sebastopol, California. The town of Sebastopol was founded in 1854, naming itself after the port city in Russia. It is about an hour north of the San Francisco Bay Area and almost 30 minutes inland from the Pacific Ocean at Bodega Bay. Sebastopol is just far enough away from San Francisco and all its problems, but not so far that it's a major hassle to get to the city if you need to, I don't know, catch a flight or go down to the Tenderloin and see some good old fashioned sidewalk campsites. This town has great stats across the board till you get to cost of living in real estate. They're extremely high, both of them. Crime and traffic aren't a big problem here, which is part of the reason retirees love this place. It's kind of known as a quirky community, almost like that arts type thing, you know, you get in a lot of places up in the Bay Area. They like their organic farming and they like to be close to the vineyards. They have a population of 8,000. Now, the median home price here, they say, is $720,000. That's not realistic. We've learned before that that that's just a number real estate agents and banks use to come up with value on something. I don't know. The typical home price here is about $1.2 million. They do have some that are under a million dollars, like 900 and 850,000. They're a little run down and probably need some work. But the typical home is about $1.2 million and it goes way up. There's one in town right now that I'd live in in a heartbeat that's going for $2.7 million. 40.4% of Sebastopol's population is over the age of 60. Number nine, La Jolla, California. Yep, heading on south to the San Diego metro area, we find La Jolla. La Jolla to San Diego is like one of those places, every city's got one, where all the rich people live. They have some beautiful houses up there. My sister used to live there. I used to drive all the way from Los Angeles metro area, like two hours and something, down to the La Jolla Comedy Store, do 20 minutes worth of comedy, get back in my car and drive back. Did this all the time. If I was smart, I'd go to the beach first, go down there way early, and then, I don't know, go to Boomer Beach and body surf for a couple hours. Or should go sit at the La Jolla Cove. Good time there. And that's one of the reasons retirees like La Jolla so much. It's a beautiful town. It's very safe. It's got the ocean right there. They've got golf in the area. Well, they got a, quite a few golf courses in the area. You got the La Jolla Country Club right there in town. You got Torrey Pines right up the road. If you're a veteran, you got Miramar Memorial Golf Course. You also got Admiral Baker Golf Course, Chula Vista, Bonita, and of course... Coronado Municipal Golf Course. And those are the reasons why so many golf-loving retirees moved to the La Jolla area. The downside is, it is expensive. The population of La Jolla is about 47,000 residents. The typical home here goes for about 1.6 million. They've got condos here, like two-bedroom, three-bedroom condos that are right on the ocean, like the sand is right outside your building. They go for $3.5 million. The most expensive one they have right now in La Jolla is going for $38 million. La Jolla is a typical upscale community. Beautiful beaches and cultural attractions, as they put it. A lot of very expensive boutique-type businesses downtown. 29.4% of La Jolla's population is over the age of 60. Number eight, Redlands, California. Redlands is the first city on this list that I said didn't show up on other ones. That's because it's sort of inexpensive compared to the other ones on this list. Compared to some place in Missouri, Arkansas, or Mississippi, it's astronomically expensive. But compared to the rest of California retirement places, it's doing pretty good. Probably the biggest reason Redlands is so affordable compared to everywhere else in California, it's right next to San Bernardino. And if you don't know, San Bernardino sucks. The whole area surrounding Redlands 
Midlands kind of blows. I mean, you got Riverside, which has gotten better in recent years. It's, it's not really there yet, but it's gotten a little bit better. That's to the west of Redlands. Then you got Beaumont, Banning to the uh, south, along with Moreno Valley, which blows. Yeah, this whole place is horrible. Redlands is okay. This place was all citrus farms back in the day. I mean, it's got a lot of great historic architecture. Citrus groves are still there somewhat, and they have a lot of cultural events out in this area. It's almost the desert, so it's kind of what they do. There's about 73,000 people living in Redlands right now, and the typical home here goes for a little over 600,000, 603,000 to be exact. Give you an idea how much nicer it is in Redlands compared to San Bernardino. The violent crime in San Bernardino is 261% above the national average. And if it sounds like I'm having a hard time with San Bernardino, where I grew up by the beach, a lot of us kind of dropped the AR that's in the middle. It was just San Bernardino. It's not what we were saying. It's just what it sounded like we were saying. So since I spent my whole life calling it that, I'm tripping over my words a little bit. Anyway, so they're 261% above the national average when it comes to violent crime. Redlands is 15% lower than the national average. Bravo, Redlands. Their cost of living is high. Not as bad as some of the other ones on this list, but it's up there. 25.5% of Redlands population is over the age of 60. Number seven, Sonoma, California. Back up north, we go to Sonoma. Sonoma is our second trip into the wine country of California, but it's not our last. Sonoma is another city that's about an hour north of San Francisco, making it far enough away where you don't have to worry about all the problems of San Francisco, but close enough to where it's not a major hassle if you need to catch a flight. You also got Sacramento to the east of Sonoma, so that's almost a little bit better sometimes if you need to catch a flight. You're not running into all that crazy traffic. There's some traffic around Sacramento. I'm not saying there isn't, but in the Bay Area, it gets brutal. It always bumps around somewhere between the first and fifth worst traffic in the nation. I've never actually driven in Boston in, I don't know, 20 years. I've taken Ubers and stuff. I've never really noticed the traffic's bad, but oh my God, people have just been complaining about it so much lately. All of Sonoma's crime stats show that it's a very safe place. They're all like 50% below the national average. We're talking total crime, violent crime, property crime. Sonoma is known for being in wine country, a historic plaza, and outdoor recreation. Now, the thing about retiring in this part of California compared to, let's say, Southern California, you're not going to have nearly as many golf courses. Sonoma has the Sonoma Golf Club, not too far away, but they don't have a whole bunch of golf courses like in Southern California, or even Monterey. Monterey has quite a few. But if you could substitute your golf addiction with wine tasting, you're in the clear here. The city of Sonoma has a population of about 11,000 residents, and the typical home here goes for about $986,000. Again, and this will be the last time I mention it, the prices go up from there, way up. So we can all assume the word typical kind of means right in the middle someplace. 33.7% of Sonoma's residents are over the age of 60. Number six, Paso Robles. Paso Robles is what they call it. It's officially called El Paso de Robles. Paso Robles is north of San Luis Obispo and about 45 minutes inland from the Pacific Ocean at Cambria. I've heard some people still refer to Paso Robles as Southern California. It's not. Everything north of Santa Barbara is considered Central California. At least that's what the official map says. I know other people still consider it, you know, Santa Maria, Los Alamos, Lompoc, that's part of Southern California, but actually it's all Central California up there. But back in the 90s, if you were getting out of LA, you just couldn't afford it anymore and you still had a little bit of money, you moved to Paso Robles. If you didn't have much money, you moved out to Moreno Valley and Hemet and worried about your tires going missing in the middle of the night. I like Paso Robles. I used to drive through there occasionally. I was stationed at Monterey at Fort Ord there and I'd drive home to Los Angeles like every weekend I could and we'd always stop there and get something to eat and it seemed like a nice place. Never spent a whole bunch of time there. We'd come down the 101 and make that left onto the 46, go by where James Dean died. It was a good trip. But Paso Robles is still a really nice place to live and definitely a good place to retire. It's not as expensive as a lot of the other places on this list, but it's definitely not as one of the cheaper ones. You got a few golf courses in the area. Great place if you're into gardening and if you love wine, even better. If you look and you see that they have a river flowing through town, I've seen that river. It's really a dry river. Bed. I'm sure when the weather turns, they do get some water going through it, but don't expect any fishing in town. It's called the Salinas River, but in my experience,
experience, probably the 50 times I've crossed that river in my life, coming back and forth, probably more than that, but let's say 50 times, I haven't seen much more than a small creek worth the water flowing through that thing. It's California, they don't have any water. What they do have is about 33,000 people, and the typical home here goes for about $713,000. 30.3% of the population is over the age of 60, and they have some hot springs in the area. So wine and hot springs, what could go wrong? Number five, Ojai, California. I love Ojai. Ojai is inland from the Pacific Ocean, about, I don't know, 20 minute drive maybe between Santa Barbara and Oxnard. This one is considered to be in Southern California. Ojai is a tourist destination known for its boutique hotels, recreational opportunities, you know, things like farming, hiking, organic agriculture, things like that. It's really a nice little artsy type town. Beautiful architecture and you won't find any chain stores or things like that in town. They have a city ordinance prohibiting this. This encourages local small businesses to develop and, you know, keep the town unique. You could see the Spanish influence in this town. I mean, the architecture just looks like that old 1760s Spanish colonization period of California. I became aware of Ojai watching the $6 million man. Remember Jamie Summers, the bionic woman? Yeah, she was from Ojai, California. If you're ever in the area, Ojai is a great place to check out. I mean, even if you don't plan on retiring there, definitely stop by and take a look. Don't worry about crowds. There's not a lot of people living here. During the summer months and on the weekends, it can get a little crowded. But for the most part, it only has 7,800 residents. So it's not a terrible place to be. The typical home here goes for about $1.09 million and 40 41.8% of the population is over the age of 60. Number four, Napa, California. Napa is back up north again, not too far from Sonoma. Napa sits north of San Pablo Bay, which is part of the San Francisco Bay, and it is just east of Sonoma. I have an old army buddy who's in Napa all the time. He lives, he lives in a pretty unique town. It's called American Canyon, which is just south of Napa. Everything on this guy's Facebook and his Instagram is him at a golf course with a drink in his hand or at a winery with his wife and all her friends. We're starting to think he's got a problem. It's been many years since I've been to Napa, but I know a lot of people have been retiring there for decades. It was a hot spot back in the 70s and probably the 80s, kind of cooled off around the 90s and then picked up again in the 2000s. Looking at the numbers now, it doesn't look like they slowed down much. In the 1970 census, they gained 62% of their population. And then in the 80s, they gained 40%. And then in the 1990 census, they only gained 21%. And then in 2017, 17%. And I guess it slowed down because 6% in 2010 and only 3% in 2020. It's probably got a little too expensive for people to retire there. So it's definitely not a place you want to think about retiring, unless you got some serious coin. The cost of living is almost 60% above the national average. They don't have much crime, so that's good. If you want to move there and drink a whole bunch of wine, you might have some competition. This town has 80,000 residents. The typical home goes for just under 900,000, 894,000 to be exact, and about 28.7% of their population is over the age of 60. Number three, San Luis Obispo. San Luis Obispo is a lot like Ojai and, and Paso Robles. In my opinion, I think it's a little bit nicer than Paso Robles. It's not as cool as Ojai though. This is where you will find the Madonna Inn. This is a three-star hotel that is known for being, I don't know, over the top and ridiculously decorated. It honestly looks like the 1970s Las Vegas threw up in each individual room, but it is very popular. It's one of those things you just gotta kind of do once. It's almost one of those places where you'd wanna go in and go, I'd like to speak to the interior decorator for this building. They look at you and go, well, he's been institutionalized since the 1970s, y'all. Well, that makes sense. San Luis Obispo is a great town, been there many times, and it is expensive. Oddly enough, it does have a little bit of crime here. It's 12% above the national average for their violent crime. That's not terrible. Like I've said in many videos before, you got places like Detroit and Chicago where there's areas that are like 450% above the national average. I'm working on a video right now about the most dangerous small towns in the United States, there is one where their violent crime rate is like 1100% above the national average. The mail stopped delivering to this town. And no, it's not in California. It's actually in Indiana. But San Luis Obispo is a great place. Like a lot of the other towns in this area, they got that great Spanish architecture and they got a population of about 47,000 residents. And people still love to retire here. It's a college town. It's got a relaxed atmosphere. It's kind of close to the ocean. 
fishing, wine, golf, gardening, and you're not in a big city. The typical home here goes for $1.03 million, and 27.4% of the population is over the age of 60. Number two, Santa Barbara, California. Santa Barbara is the biggest city on this list, but for some reason it's still got that like, I wouldn't say small town, but town feel, you know? It's not terribly large. It's just, it's a unique city. I like Santa Barbara, always have. Santa Barbara is one of the first cities you get to when you're going up the coast out of Los Angeles. I mean, Ventura and Oxnard are kind of still part of the Los Angeles metro area. Well, Santa Barbara is the first one that's really not part of it. it. Sits just north of the Channel Islands, and it's got some good places to surf. You find better places down in Ventura, but Santa Barbara's no slouch. We used to drive up and surf Rencon, but during the winter, sand spit. Definitely not a place in the winter for first timers. Just like every place else in this part of California, if you like wine, if you like sunshine, you like gardening, you like to walk on the beach, Santa Barbara is a great place for all that. Typical Mediterranean climate, beautiful beaches, cultural scenes really good here. They got 92,000 people. The typical home goes for $1.6 million and 26.7% of their population is over the age of 60. All right, before we get to number one, if you're thinking about moving to California or any place, there's a link for home and money in the description area below. They can get you in touch with a local real estate agent in just about any place in the United States. All right, on to number one. And number one, Palm Springs, California. I used to go to Palm Springs all the time. Southern California, this is where you went during spring break during the 1970s, 80s, and I think the late 80s is when it kind of went to hell. Sonny Bono became the mayor and put the kibosh on all the good times. If you can imagine a whole town being so crowded, it looks like a really popular concert, like a you know, the pit area, shoulder to shoulder people. That's how Palm Springs was when we used to go there. It was a great place. Now, they've got a lot of neighborhoods where none of that was going on, and that's where all the retirees lived. They got plenty of golf. It is a very hot place to live, so the summer's brutal. The winter might get down to a brisk 74 degrees. And before you do, yes, I do know there are some times it can get a little colder than that, but for the most part, it's about 72 degrees. Now, this is the one that kind of blew me away because I said, where would you want to retire in California if you had to retire? Everyone kept saying Palm Springs. Palm Springs is a nice place. It's definitely not one of the best ones on here. It is affordable, again, compared to places in California. Palm Springs has a population of 48 thousand residents during the summer months that gets up a little higher the typical home here goes for six hundred and forty seven thousand dollars for california in a decent town that's a good price 47.8 percent of their population is over the age of 60. not bad for a town that kind of resembles a resort they got so many golf courses here all right that's today's video hope you guys enjoyed it hope you got some information out of it now go out have a great day and be nice to each other